Hello. Today I want us to think about how often we wear our individual items of clothing. And I think part of being mindful is being aware of how much we're using our clothes. So if we have an item that we're wearing every single day, that's amazing. If we have something that maybe we only wear once in a while, is there something we can do to make that garment more wearable and maybe make it possible for us to not need as many items of clothing? And so today I'm gonna to share a project with you where I'm gonna take a pair of pants and add some tabs so that they can be worn as pants or they can be worn as convertible capris. And that way I can pretty much wear them all year round. For the project, the most important thing you need, of course, is some pants. So I'm using these really lightweight kind of hiking pants. They don't have to be quite this thin but I would avoid knit and I would avoid jeans. The knit is gonna stretch and give you a headache and the jeans are gonna be too thick to really sew through easily. So I'd pick something, you know, a little thinner, a little lighter weight. And then you have a couple choices. If you can get to the store or you have it, you could use bias tape, this really wide double fold bias tape. And I used this on another pair of pants because I was able to get to the store. Um, if you can't do that, then fabric works great. You can use a scrap, you know, little piece of fabric. You need enough to cut four. So you can see the dimensions in the video, but I'm gonna use this kind of contrast print because I can't match the fabric exactly anyway, so I'm just gonna make it interesting. And so along those lines, I'm also gonna use these contrast buttons. And these are shank buttons, but of course you could use sew through whatever you have. Um, I would keep them around half an inch. You could go three eighths or maybe five eighths, but I tried with three quarter buttons and they were just really too big for the tabs that are gonna end up about this size. I also have a printed pattern, which you can use, but of course you can just cut and measure, especially if you have a rotary cutter, that makes it super easy. So that's what you need and some thread. And I'm still going with this contrast thing, so I'm just using a little bit darker thread. Um, for contrast and also because I don't have the exact color. So when in doubt, just make it a design feature. So I wanna start off by showing you what we're gonna be doing today. So we're gonna start with a pair of regular pants and we're gonna turn them into convertible capris. We're gonna add a button and a tab that's gonna let us roll up our pants and have them stay that way. And I love this idea because it takes something that maybe we would only wear in the winter or the fall and extends it to something we could wear year round. And since we have these nice new walking capris or walking pants ready to go, I wanted to share some of my favorite walking tips with you. And so my first tip is, what can you do by walking that you need to do anyways? I live in Southern California and we love our cars. And so it takes a real effort to step back and think, could I do this without my car? And a lot of times the answer is yes. So could I walk to the store? Could I walk to the post office? Could I walk to church? And it's interesting because in my mind, I find that when I'm walking to do something that I need to do anyway, it doesn't feel as much like exercise as when I go for a walk just to get my minutes or my steps in. My second tip is when you're out walking, think about the surfaces that you're walking on. We are very used to walking on sidewalks, flat and level surfaces, and that could actually cause a repetitive use injury in addition to not moving very many parts of our body. And so if you could walk on gravel, sand, dirt, grass, wood chips, you know, look around and see if there's other surfaces you can expose your feet to and your body and give them some different ways to move. Uh, my last tip is to think about not just the surfaces, but what's on your feet and can you go barefoot? Now, chances are you probably don't wanna do that, you know, on some public walking areas where there might be glass or other things that could be damaging, but what about walking barefoot in your backyard, on the grass, at the beach? You know, that gives your foot another experience and it can actually ground you to the earth literally and also give some emotional and mental benefits. So take a walk and enjoy your new convertible capris. 
If you're going to use the pattern, you want to print it and of course cut it out first. And this is regular computer paper, so I would suggest using not your sewing scissors. Let me get right next to the line here. Um, just because you want to keep those nice and sharp. So you can go ahead and cut out the pattern. And like I mentioned, of course, you don't have to use the pattern. You could go straight to your cutting mat and use a ruler, of course. That's another way to do this. We want it to end up three and a fourth by six and a half, and we're gonna have four of those. So after I get this cut out, then, oh, I need to fix my pattern. Good thing I'm editing. You do actually need four of these. So let's take our fabric, and I have two pieces because I've been making masks. So I have these pieces already cut, and if I fold them, in half, they're just about the perfect size. Now, if you already have straight edges, this is a little trick. If you already have straight edges, you don't need to cut them again. So just, if you line those up and then you line up your pattern, then that will save you two sides that you don't have to cut. A Couple of tips when you're pinning, you wanna make sure you go down through all the layers. And since we're gonna be cutting, the pins do need to be completely inside the paper. So you'll notice it's kind of hard to see, but I went through all the layers so that the paper is firmly attached to the fabric. And this is small, so I'm just gonna do one in each corner. And I'm just gonna cut out two at a time because with the scissors, um, it gets weird if you try to cut out too many. If you're using the rotary cutter, you could definitely figure out a way to cut these all out at the same time. So I'm gonna cut out two, and cut out two, two more. And you don't need to worry about these fold lines uh, because they're just to show you what you're gonna do. So you don't really need to mark them. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side, and I'll meet you back in a minute. I'm at the ironing board and we're basically gonna reproduce these lines. Now, if you're using the bias tape, you can skip this first part, but we're gonna end up with three folds. So I'm gonna take one of my pieces of fabric and I want the right side out. I'm going to fold it in half so that the long edges are touching and press a crease. And then I'm gonna take it and open it up and bring those edges into the middle. I would probably do one at a time. You don't wanna get rid of that crease in the middle, so you wanna make sure that you don't iron over that again and undo your hard work. It's not a big deal if you do, just iron it again, but try to keep it like that. So when it folds up, it ends up like this, okay? So this is the part where you can bring your bias tape if you're using that. Either way, you're gonna open it up and we wanna put about a quarter of an inch fold at the bottom. So you don't really need to measure it, just tuck it, it's about maybe your pinky fingernail, give or take, and go ahead and press that. And then you can do the same thing on the other side. And you're gonna repeat this with all four of your pieces until they all have the folds. Now that I have my pieces pressed, I'm going to actually flip them so they're right sides together. And I like to put a pin just to hold it, but basically we're going to be sewing the short edges together along that fold line, which is about a quarter of an inch. So you can use the fold or you can use like the edge of your presser foot as a guide. So we're gonna line that up, stitch forward, Reverse, come all the way to the other end, reverse, and then do the same thing on the other side. And if you have these all pinned, you can just keep doing them one after the other and then just trim them when you're all done. After I sew them, then I'm gonna trim my threads and clip the corners. I like to just remove a little bit of that bulk so that when we flip them, they won't be, the corners can come out neatly and make a nice sharp corner. 
So just take your scissors and cut some of that extra fabric off at the diagonal. Don't go past your stitching. We're just removing that little extra bit in the corner. You're gonna repeat that with all four of them. Now that they're all sewn, we're going to flip them so that the right side is showing and make kind of a canoe. So you can just tuck your thumbs inside there, pinch with your fingers and flipped. And while you're there, you can push those corners out a little bit. So thumbs, pinch, flip, thumbs, pinch, flip. And then the next step is we need to get this raw edge tucked in. So you probably want to start at the side and you can open this up or you could push it to one side, whatever it wants to do, and then tuck that end in and do the same thing on the other side. So like I said, if it's easier, just push it to one side and then fold. So you should have your fold marks there, hopefully, to still help you a little bit. So basically tucking so that the raw edges are in and don't worry if it's not laying completely flat, we can go press it in just a minute. So once again, take those ends and you might want to just tuck those to one side, push in so that we have no more raw edges. Back at the iron, I'm just going to give my little tabs a quick press just to make sure that they're nice and flat. So you can repeat that with all four of them and then you'll be ready to move back to the sewing machine. Now that my tabs are all pressed and ready to go, I'm going to top stitch all the way around all four sides close to the edge, about a 16th from the edge. I have these little tiny marks that help me, but basically you wanna be close. And if you have a needle down function, it's definitely helpful because we're gonna pivot in the corners. So when you get close to the corner, slow down. Make sure your needle is down, lift your presser foot, and turn, pivot. Okay, and that'll just make a nice sharp corner for you. Okay, and just repeat that around all four sides and do that with all four. Next, we're going to get ready to put our buttonholes. If you don't remember or know what size your buttons are, you might wanna measure them. So mine is kind of in between 3 8 and a half. So I'm just gonna go with a half and keep that in mind. And I'm using a Frixian pen. I found these a while ago and I love them just for writing because they're erasable, but I didn't ever think about using them on fabric. They disappear from friction or from heat. And so this is another less expensive tool you can use for marking fabric that when you iron it, the marks will disappear. So feel free to check these out or if you have a regular fabric marker or fabric pencil. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on one end of the ties and we wanna be in the middle. And we're gonna do vertical buttonholes basically. And it's about a quarter of an inch, but you want the bottom of your buttonhole to be above your stitching, or sorry, excuse me, above that fabric from our seam. So I'm just a little bit up from that. And then the guideline is that a buttonhole, and I'm just gonna start at the one because it's easier to see without all the 16ths. A buttonhole should be an eighth of an inch bigger. So my button is a half and then I'm gonna add another eighth. Now, depending what kind of sewing machine you have, if you have a fancy sewing machine, you might have an attachment that's gonna make your life a lot easier for this. I don't know if you can see that, let's see. Um, but go ahead 
And I would just, regardless of what kind of machine you have, I would suggest putting your marks just to be safe. So remember, we want to be in the middle above where that fabric cuts off and then an eighth of an inch bigger than your button. So I'm doing mine five eighths. Okay, so take a minute and mark all your buttonholes and then you're gonna wanna find your buttonhole foot if you have one for your sewing machine and we'll meet back. Back at the machine, you're going to want your buttonhole foot. You may need your button. And I have a piece of scrap fabric that I've drawn a buttonhole on to practice because buttonholes are definitely one of those things you don't wanna to have to undo. And if you haven't made one before or for a while, it's always a good idea to practice. So my buttonhole foot actually has this little piece that has a button icon and I can place my button in there and adjust it and it will measure the length of my button for me, which is kind of nice. So each machine is slightly different. The foot that you have may be different. So it's a good idea to read your manual if you need a refresher or to learn how to do it, or even look on YouTube for videos for your specific machine. I'm gonna go ahead and place my foot on the machine. Since mine's electric, I'm gonna make sure I have the buttonhole that I want selected. And mine also does have this little thing that has to come down and stop the buttonhole. And so all of this is on my display. That's why I say it's, it's good to look at your manual or watch videos for your machine. Now my buttonhole is gonna start at the front and go back. So I'm going to line up with the edge of the buttonhole that's closest to me. I'm gonna tuck this under here and line up the opening. And mine is gonna do this so easy. It's gonna do all the work for me. Um, so I'm just gonna push the pedal and it's gonna go. And then I would recommend doing a double check and making sure that this is actually the right size for your button. So I'm gonna grab my button come, and just make sure. So <laughs> these buttons like to fly around. Um, so definitely bigger than my button. It looks like it's gonna fit. I could cut, no, cut it open and double check, but now that I've practiced and I know the size, I've got it all good, then I'm gonna do the same thing with my four tabs and meet back to show the next step. There are a couple tricks to make sure that your buttonholes last the test of time. So one of them is that you can sew around two times and that can help your buttonhole be stronger. Another trick is that you can use fray check and you can put that on before you cut it open. You don't have to do either of these, but especially with something like this where you know it's gonna have a lot of work and frequent use, you might want to reinforce it just to make it extra strong. Now, when you're opening your buttonhole, they do sell special kits that have a blade and a little piece of wood that are wonderful. But if you don't have one, the other trick is to use your seam ripper. And the first part of this trick is to put a pin through the top part of the buttonhole so that your seam ripper doesn't go crazy because I've done this without the seam ripper and what can happen is you can go too far too fast. Um, another trick might be to start in the middle. Be careful, make sure your fingers are out of the way because we're gonna poke through to the back and then come forward until we can't go any further, flip it and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and then you can take your pins out and you should have an opening. Now, because we were being so careful, you might not have gone quite all the way to the end. So you could carefully clip that if you need to, so that you can make sure that your button will fit. And you're gonna repeat this 
it's a little tight, but it'll loosen up as I use it. Um, you're going to repeat this with all four of your buttonholes. Okay. The Now it's time to get your pair of pants and we're going to turn them wrong side out. We want to be on the inside of the pants. So turn them so that you can see the tags. And we're going to be working with the legs. So you can pick a side, pick a leg, pick a side. And I'm going to measure nine and a half inches from the bottom of my pants. Now just for reference, I am 5'7", so I'm a little bit tall, so you might need to adjust this a little bit for yourself. Um, so you can try on your pants and decide where you want them to end up. But nine and a half is working pretty well for me. And so I'm going to put a pin here. I did mark it, but I'll put a pin too, because it's easier for you to see. And what's going to happen, I'm gonna do this on all four legs, and then I'm going to take one of my tabs and I'm going to center it over the seam and I'm going to put the end that does not have the buttonhole okay so I'm going to hold that carefully come in from the bottom so that I don't pin it shut okay and I am going to be sewing like this so I'm going to put my pin perpendicular to the edge all right so we're going to end up like that we're going to do that on all four sides so once again find the bottom measure up nine and a half inches and like i mentioned these are for capris you could also do something similar if you have capris and you want them to be convertible shorts that could be fun so you know sometimes you just need to do a little trying on to see what's going to work exactly for your body so i'm nine and a half inches up i'm going to take the non-buttonhole end make sure i'm not pinning my pants shut center it over my seam and pin it. I'm going to repeat that with the other side. There's a couple of tricks to make sure you're ready for this next step. So first of all, if you haven't already, take off your buttonhole foot and replace it with your regular stitching foot. The other thing is that you have this I don't even know what it's called, but this extra piece on the end that gives you more sewing space. Right now we want less of a sewing space so that we can put the leg around this. So go ahead and take that off. And then you can do this with a straight stitch and I would just go back and forth several times, but I really like to do it with a, with a zigzag, with a tight zigzag. So once again, check your machine, check the settings. Um, I am using a zigzag that it has a stitch length of one and a stitch width of 2.5. And I'm going to put this over the edge, come over here close to the top. And like I said, you can do this with a straight stitch. I would just probably go around or go back and forth several times so that you make sure that it's on there nice and secure. Sometimes this tight zigzag does need a little help going over the seam, so you might have to push it a little bit. But you shouldn't really have to reverse. Uh, I've got that one spot that looks kind of funky, so I'm just going to sew back over that little part because my perfectionism can't handle it. <laughs> and then you're just going to repeat that. So I'm just going to come over to the other side and same thing. Once again, if you don't want to do a zigzag, you can do a straight. I would just make sure you go back and forth several times or even do like a little box rectangle just to make sure this is really secure. So I think you can see why we wouldn't really want to do this with jeans or knits because it would just not work very well for you right here. So repeat that with the other leg and then we're going to trim the threads and flip them right side out. Okay, we are so close to done. I have trimmed the threads, flipped the pants right side out. So now you can see that the tab is hidden when it's not being used. I have a needle. 
um, thread and my button. And when I do buttons, I really like to double the thread a couple times, so actually quadruple. So I measure across my body, so from fingertip to fingertip, and then I like to do that twice if I'm gonna be sewing several buttons. So I have a really long piece of thread right now, folded in half, and I'm going to thread my needle. And I find it really helps to pinch the thread between my thumb and finger so that I can help it. It also helps to have needles that have the big eyes. And then I'm going to bring my ends together and I'm gonna knot them together. So I'm gonna end up with four strands, which is gonna help my button be reinforced with less stitching on my part. Um, to do a knot, you can use whatever method you like, but if you're looking for a method, I like to make a smiley face point my needle and thread at each other, lay the thread on top of my needle so I have a loop, wrap about five or six times from the left, pinch, and then pull my needle without letting go. That's the trick. And sometimes it gets tangled, but most of the time it works really well and then you can just cut off all this extra stuff. So my needle, or my button actually, I have a shank button and it's a little bit different to sew a sew through button. So if you're not sure how to do that, I would definitely recommend checking out a video. But the buttons are basically going to go right below the stitching that where we attach the tab. Now we do need to make sure we don't sew things shut. So I'm going to gather it up in my hand and I like to hide my knots too. So I'm going to take my needle through from the back. And remember, our buttonholes are going vertically. So I think I want my buttons to go this direction so that the plastic is going vertical. Um, so just kind of keep that as a side thought as you're sewing your button. And these shank buttons are really easy because I'm just going to go through a couple times and try not to stab myself too many times or get my thread completely tangled. Um, so I do have my thread, you know, nice and thick, but I think I'm still going to sew through here three times just because I like to make sure with my buttons that there is no chance that they're going to come out. Um, if you have bought things from the store that have buttons, they actually sew those on with a machine and you may have noticed that if you grab it just right, you can completely undo it. So the nice thing about hand sewn buttons is you can avoid that. Um, even though this button has a shank, I do like to wrap around underneath the button just to make it nice and secure. I'm going to take one more st stitch through so I can finish my knot on the back. And then on the back, I will take a little stitch, make a loop, then I'm going to go through the loop and I, so I only have to do it once, I actually like to sew through this other loop. But either way you can just make several loops and pull through, pull it nice and tight, and as an added little reinforcement I like to sew back through where I was stitching. And then we're going to trim it. So you can finish your other buttons and then it's really cool because you can just fold these up several times and then bring your tab up, put your button through. It's okay if it's a little tight that first time. Remember, it'll stretch out after you use it a few times. I'll hide that for now. <laughs> and then you would do that on both sides and you've got your convertible cargo or convertible caprice. Enjoy.